Okay. One more. Hi, I'm John, and this is my merch haul from Japan for March of 2024. This shipment was made using a proxy service called Zen Market, where you can bid on items from Yahoo Japan, Mercari, and other Japanese marketplaces for a small fee, plus shipping and handling to your respective country. If you want to learn more about how to use Zen Market, check the description below for a video from friend of the channel, Matches Peaches. I won these figures over several auctions in January and bunched them together in a single shipment. Being the cheapskate I am, I used the slowest and cheapest shipping option, which takes up to three months. So it was actually a big surprise that I received these a month earlier than expected. Some of these are Japanese exclusives and some of them are available here in the US for purchase, but I managed to get them for a lot cheaper than their regular retail price. And here's everything. And I have some first impressions. Starting with... Napa. This is the World Tournament Super Battle Ichiban Kuji Lottery Last One Prize. It's a Japanese exclusive with a different head sculpt to the mass market release. To me, the sculpt and paint are on point. His face sculpt is incredibly fierce and one-to-one -to, -one to the source material. The skin color is actually painted on rather than being the molded plastics color, which makes it look a lot more premium than other masterlized figures. This was something I picked up because Raditz was announced to come out later this year, so I wanted the trinity of Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz together for the Saiyan Saga collection. Next up is the Battle of Planet Namek Last One Prize Goku and Frieza. This is also a Japanese Ichiban Kuji lottery exclusive. The difference between this versus the mass market release is that this one has their manga colors versus the anime colors on the regular release. I think this is a really fun piece as long as you look at it from its intended side view. Once you sort of inspect each figure face on, I sort of get disappointed with the facial details especially around the eyes. But seeing as how the poses are based off of a manga chapter cover and that they have their manga colors, I think this is a decent pickup overall. Next up, another Frieza figure from the Battle of Planet Namek set. This one being Form 2 Frieza. This was my highest anticipated figure from the Battle of Planet Namek set. And for me, it doesn't disappoint. I love all the details in the sculpt, especially all the texture work on the white parts of his skin and even some of the bent areas of his feet. The only real complaints I have about this Frieza is that there isn't any shading on the pink areas of the skin and that the purple bulb areas on his head and shoulders are inconsistent with other Frieza figures. Some of them have a smooth glossy finish while this one has a lot of texture. Also, mine came with one bent horn which hopefully a heat gun will fix. Next up, we have the Form 3 Frieza from the same set. And as I said earlier, you can definitely see the difference in texture between the two figures' purple bulbs. And they're from the same set. I would understand if they were different releases, but being in the same set, I feel that they should be consistent. Besides that, I pretty much have the same thoughts on this figure as I did for Form 2. I really like it a lot. It's really big, it's got a lot of texture on there, but it's lacking some shading. I'll admit that I didn't really want this as much as the Form 2 Frieza, but I figured since I was buying a couple Friezas, I might as well go all in. Speaking of all in, the last Frieza I picked up is the Full Power Frieza from the Versus Omnibus Brave set. I'll be totally honest, I was not looking forward to getting this figure, but it happened to be in a lot with the Form 2 Frieza and the Goku Frieza Last One Prize, so I went for it. In reality, it's a lot better than I expected. Uh, the sculpt is very well done, and there's plenty of texture and surface detail. I also really like what they did to make him appear to float using these little clear pegs, 
which seems to be relatively new for any Master Live style figures. My one complaint is that there's a very distinct lack of shading or battle damage on this figure, which makes it look very plain, considering it's all white. But maybe there's something we can do about that in a future video. The next freeze, I mean figure, I bought is the Fear of Androids, Android 17. This was another figure I initially wasn't too interested in getting because its retail price is around $75 to $100 depending on where you look. But because the seller who sold the Nappa was also selling this for around $36, I just went for it. In the end, this one also has a perfect likeness and it's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. I love all the details on the clothing, especially on the jeans with the stitching and the leather accent on the belt and the holsters. Weirdly enough, I also really like the shoelaces. The next figure I bought is from the FES Sun Goku line. This is Volume 4, Special Color, Super Saiyan 3 Sun Goku. This is a figure I've had my eye on for a really long time, but again, did not want to bite since it's an old figure, so the prices for it have skyrocketed. This is a crane game figure, so the scale is a bit smaller and the quality should be a little bit lower than Master Life's figures, but it is an incredibly detailed. The entire FES Son Goku line of figures is sculpted by Hiroyuki Nakazawa, who is renowned in Japan for his sculpts on Dragon Ball and other anime figures. The hair sculpt on this alone is worth the price of admission, and the special color is again his manga colors, which is definitely my preference. And this being an older prize figure has some shading on it, particularly on the legs, which is great. And something you don't really see on newer crane figures these days. Lastly, which has become one of my favorite figures, is the Master Stars Peace Super Saiyan Goku. This figure is also sculpted by Hiroyuki Nakazawa, and the sculpt is amazing. It really gives a cool, confident look to Goku that you don't really see on many figures. The paint quality is on point, with his skin painted and not molded plastic colors again, and really bright manga colors on his gi. There is a lot of shading and even some line work in the folds of his gi, which I'm a huge fan of. This figure is definitely a top contender in my collection for sure. And that's everything. If you stuck through to the end and you like what you saw, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to hear my hot takes and would like me to do some full reviews on the figures or if these short impressions are more your style. Thanks for watching. See you next time.